Miss Lauren Hill is one of the most potent artists of all time. With every vocal inflection, she delivers powerful emotions, and with every bar, truth that continues to reveal itself over time and throughout generations. With only one solo album, her impact is almost astounding when you really sit down and think about it. But this video isn't about why she never dropped another album or her personal life. In this video, we are going to take a look at what Lauryn Hill was really like in the studio, straight from the mouths of Nas, Wyclef, and more. Lauryn Hill is a very purposeful artist when it comes to making music. That's part of the reason why we only received one solo album from her, but that's for a whole other video. When it comes to the message that she wants to spread to the world through her music, Lauren always looks to forces beyond herself for inspiration. Because I know that I'm able to do what I'm able to do because he enables me to do that. You know what I'm saying? And it's just me bringing out this message because he chose to give me the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Not because I'm better than you or better than him or better than her, but because he gave me the power and the strength and the inspiration. This belief has carried her to new heights within her music and outside of it. But what I found is that every time that I, I pray before I speak and I ask God for the confidence and that he be glorified in everything that I say and everything that I do, for some reason, words just come out of my mouth. So please don't be convinced by what people say. I'm not brilliant. I'm not a genius. I'm not even gifted, really. I mean, I'm, I have gifts, but these are things that all come from God and through me. But interestingly enough, she realized at some point that in order to become the best version of herself as an artist, she had to harness her God-given abilities and truly work hard. Here's what she said about leveling up her skills versus just drawing divine inspiration. You know, I just tried to sing that song just like Whitney Houston, you know what I mean? That that's really was the, the goal. You know, even with the gift that I have now, I mean, I'm not, I've leaned on God for so long. Hey God, you just gave me this gift and I'm just gonna go out there and sing. But it's, it's only now that I'm realizing how much larger and how expansive my gift becomes when I actually pay attention to it and try to, try to you know, practice and try to perfect it. I've always, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna warm up. I'm just gonna go in the studio and sing this song and inspiration will take me. And yes, that's true. You know, we, we are inspired to do things and, 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 and definitely, but you know, now I'm understanding that like in the Bible, for example, when it talked about David, you know, it's always said that David was a skillful player. He played cunningly, you know, so that, that took practice. And I'm, you know, I'm not afraid of that anymore. I'm, I'm, that, that's exciting to me. Lauren Hill is in search of truth. And once she finds that truth, she knows it's up to her to deliver that message to the world. What's going on is God is making so I only respond to the truth. I don't get no butterflies in my stomach unless it's the truth. You understand what I'm trying to say? Once she has that message to channel, Lauren hangs on every word. It all has to mean something. But even when she does find that truth and puts it into the music, it's not like she automatically knew that people would respond how they did to her album. She actually said this in an interview about the debut. I was thinking that hip hop and R&B as we now know them aren't as personal and intimate as the music I want to make. A lot of it is very braggadocious and cool. I was nervous that people weren't going to relate or would think I'm a Martian. To know that people have responded in such a way makes me realize that they're actually very ready for truth and real experiences. Lauren's recording process developed over time as she worked with the Fugees, but she says it wasn't until their album, The Score, that she fully felt comfortable with how she wanted to record. And then we were able to do um, the sophomore album, which was The Score, and that was cool because I was a little bit older, so I started to get a little more um, knowledgeable about the studio and what I was doing. My identity was, was, was developing more, you know, as far as who, was I, who I wanted to be and how I wanted to communicate my sound. By this album, you know, it really is, it, you know, it's me. But for this video, we're going to focus mostly on her solo album. For the recording of The Miseducation, she went to multiple places, recording in New York, Miami, and even Tough Gong Studios in Jamaica, which was built by Bob Marley. Bob Marley was clearly a big influence on her music and her life in general because here's what she said about him. Um, um, child of God, you know, um, a child of God who I believe um, lived up to his potential. You know, I think that we're all children of God, but not all of us 
for some reason, you know, realize our full potential. When Lauren Hill described why she wanted to record there, here's what she said. When I started recording in New York and New Jersey, lots of people were talking to me about going different routes. I could feel people up in my face and I was picking up on bad vibes. I wanted a place where there was good vibes, where I was among family and it was tough gone. According to producer Commissioner Gordon, not to be confused with the character from Batman, although both equally great, Lauren had multiple studio rooms going at the same time and she would orchestrate each room to work on different pieces of music simultaneously. Lauren knew exactly what her vision was and had the people around her able to execute that vision flawlessly. Here's what Gordon said about the recording of Lost Ones. It was our first morning in Jamaica and I saw all of these kids gathered around Lauren screaming and dancing. Lauren was in the living room next to the studio with about 15 Marley grandchildren around her, the children of Ziggy and Steven and Julian, and she starts singing this rap verse and all the kids start repeating the last word of each line, chiming in very spontaneously because they were so into the song. As you can see, the music is infectious and the energy is contagious when Miss Hill is working. According to those around her, she was directing the musicality of every aspect of the album even when she wasn't playing the instruments herself. But she has no problem admitting that she would look to the highest level of talent around her for help expressing that vision when it came to the instrumentation and production of the album. Similarly to the process explained in our video about Kanye West, Lauren would feel something deeply and know how she wanted it to be expressed, but would look to others for that expression musically. There were rumors even that the label was trying to bring in RZA or someone else to direct the musical portion of the album, but Lauren was adamant about arranging and writing things herself. Here's what she said in a medium note to her fans addressing some of the criticism about her process. She said, I adore Stevie and honor Herbie and Quincy, who are our forebears, but they were not women. Men often can say, I want it done like this and not be challenged. The same rules don't always apply for women who may be met with resistance. When this happens, you replace that player with someone who respects you and the office you hold. She continues by going into her actual musical process saying, my approach to making music is non-traditional, possibly non-linear, and more a product of my heart, soul, and experience gained through doing than something I was taught in a formal school setting, not much different than the genre of hip hop itself. I never held myself out as some accomplished guitar player. I play to articulate better to seasoned players what I want. It's an instrument I learned without any real lessons or instruction. I play in an unorthodox manner and use it as a writing tool. Couldn't or didn't tune my own guitar? That sounds like an assumption. And she has never been shy about giving credit to her influences. Later on, I, it, was, it was important to me that the world understand, you know, exactly how, you know, Wyclef, you know, how talented he was and how much he did contribute to the group. And you know what I'm saying? And, and also now with like the success of Ghetto Superstar, people feeling prized. You know I mean, it meant, it meant a lot to me because I knew how talented they were. You know what I mean? And it wasn't enough for me to just vouch for them. You know what I'm saying? And be like, yo, you know, these cats are dope. That's why I'm with them. But, um, you know, you never know how other people respond to certain things. You know, you just don't know. Um, I know how I was affected, and it really didn't bother me. You know, it really didn't mean anything to me because I knew who, I knew where my loyalties were. But one of the biggest things in the headlines over the last few years when it comes to Lauren Hill is the accusation that she doesn't write her own bars. Young Guru, who is Jay-Z's longtime engineer and music industry veteran, cleared up those rumors strongly by saying this. Just seeing Lauren, right? Cause my man Mal had been talking to Nan and he was like, yo, you gotta write every day, you gotta write every day, you gotta write every day. And you would be like walking past Lauren and she just got a pen in the pad. And then the times when she'd be like, what you think about this? Hmm. Like she's asking me what I think about the verse. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, what you think about this? What you think about, and that, those were the times that I like. Did, did she ever spit to you any songs in the making that Later ended became, up on the yeah, yeah. miseducation because you know I had a, I had a debate with some people in the room about um you know how much writing she does you know what I'm saying so what you mean that she didn't write those yeah who, people who, were saying no no she writes that? there's a lot of she people that them. was writing no 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 no, no, no. Not, not her lyrics no not writing the music the mu I know no, that, I know. no no what you talking about what that, you talking about claim. she claimed she claimed to what write the, and produce everything okay what, what, and what, the issue what that what that should that. what that should have been is exactly. when Vader Nobles there you there go brings you lost ones mm -hmm. should have just said Vader Nobles you know what I'm saying but at the end of the day it's a break from oh y'all think Clef and 
is the only one. Do, no, I can do what you know. what I'm saying, right? But it's simple, and you can see how Sony could come in and do that. But that's you can't take away from no one ever pinch nothing for her. Right. What he's talking about is the different producers and, yeah. and that sort of the thing. Because credit. when you got the album, it said written, produced, and arranged, and arranged, and arranged, and arranged, arranged, arranged yeah. by Lauryn you know Hill. That's but don't, please don't take away from her pen. And Lauryn Hill followed up on that statement by saying, you may be able to make suggestions, but you can't write for me. I am the architect of my creative expression. No decisions are made without me. I hire master builders and masterful artisans and technicians who play beautifully, lend their technical expertise, and who translate the language that I provide into beautifully realized music. I mean, there are even multiple videos where you can see her writing her own lyrics in the studio herself. Not to say that videos can't be deceiving, but with how much she cares about her art and how soulful the words and the music that she speaks are, I personally believe that they came directly from her and from the source, but that's just me. You guys can debate it in the comments if you'd like. And no matter how the music was made, the impact is undeniable. If you turn to anyone in hip hop, they'll mention that album and Lauryn Hill with the highest of regard. Erica Badu says Lauryn Hill literally inspired her to make music. Lauren Hill is my hero, I, absolutely. Uh, she did a poem on her very first album, What Could Make a Mighty Man Run. Inspired me to go ahead and, I can do this. Yes, Miss Hill is a uh, very intelligent woman, you know, I'm watching. Still to this day. Absolutely. Nicki Minaj was damn near on the floor bowing down to Miss Hill. No, 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 please, please. <laughs> I, I'm in love with you. I'm in love with you. Your spirit, your mind, everything about you. And everyone from Childish Gambino to Pink in multiple genres has given her her due praises. I think I've probably listened to Miseducation by Lauryn Hill the most. Really? Wow. Like, I think, like, I mean, it's like kind of flawless. Like, every time I listen to it, I was like, I don't know. And, and including Stevie, like, because I, I love music of my mind, but like, I feel like Lauryn Hill's album just uh, an album about love and every type of love. I've just never heard an album quite like that. The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill to me is like, that's my favorite that's album the ever. Best. But the Unplugged is not far from it. I can't lie. It's a bit, any, I mean, anything she touches is gold. So it's like. If you were to make your last song, Alicia Keys, and you had to choose one oh artist. My gosh to collaborate with vocal. Oh my, for the last song. This is it. <laughs> this is it. Lauren Hill keeps coming up. I always wanted to do something with her. We never got a chance to do that anything would yet. Be Please. Crazy. I think that would be so fly. Man, it changed all our life. Um, it changed Eric Sermon life, it changed my life, it changed anybody who was tuned in to Lauren Hill. Just like my whole community was like, we're all very much invested and her success. And that's something that's very daunting to Lauren from my perspective. It seemed like she had a lot of weight on her shoulders and she wanted to always be positive at all at all times. And she put this spiritual weight on her to be the most positive, most spiritual person she could be. She was very tough to do in her music business. And so when she did that, people started trying to find fault with her instead of just celebrating her for who she is. And I just felt like she was song worthy. And if the, the direct catalyst of it was waiting to see her perform at the BT Awards and then she didn't come out and do the last part. And I'm like, you know what? People always invite Lauren to perform. They, they always say, oh, we want to get Lauren. Everyone was excited. But then she comes and she's like, well, I want to do a poem. I want to strum my guitar. Then everyone get, wants to get disappointed. And it's like, do they really want to see Lauren or they want to see some caricature of her? And that's what made me write this song. She has the amount of pain I require in her voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she sounds... Heartbroken and beautiful. She's like a songbird. Lauren Hill. You can tell that she's been through a lot of things. Mary J. Blige, she's been through a lot. You can hear that soul. I miss her, man. I want her to come back. I mean, even Lauren Hill herself had this to say about her impact when she was responding to critics. The album inspired many people from all walks of life because of its radical, intense will to live and to express love. 
I appreciate everyone who was a part of it in any and every capacity. It wouldn't have existed the way that it did without the involvement, skill, hard work, and talents of the artists slash musicians and technicians who were a part of it. But it still required my vision, my passion, my faith, my will, my soul, my heart, and my story. She also said, show me an artist working now who hasn't been directly influenced by the work I put in, and I'll show you an artist who's been influenced by an artist who is directly influenced by the work that I put in. I was and continue to be a door opener, even if the blind don't see it, and the prideful are too proud to admit it. I lived this, you watched this, and heard about it. But like Pink said, it's not just the lyrics, it's the pain and emotion that you can feel in Lauren Hill's voice every time she sings that makes her song so special. Here's a video of her recording in the booth and you can just tell that it's being channeled. Just count me and I. <laughs> oh, it is? Whoa, okay, got you. And to pull your window curtain. Oh, let your moon come shining in into our lives again. It's not like it just comes out naturally and she doesn't go back in and re-record. Lauren takes her time finding the right sound that's perfect for each song. Here she is recording the sweetest thing live in the studio. It was the sweet, the sweetest thing I've known. Sweetest thing I've ever known Was like the kiss on a calico And she still sounds just as good two decades later. But you better make it hard Loving you was like a battle And we both end up Everything matters to her, even down to the ad libs. And of course, it's not just the singing. It should never be forgotten, ever, that Lauren Hill's rapping ability is at the highest of calibers as an MC. Check out her rapping this in one take. The consumerism running through them like a tumor in them, separatism, communism, socialism, skepticism, capitalism running through them like the rumor business, ageism, sexism, racism, chauvinism, television running through them like an organism, mechanism, blockchainism, poison in the ecosystem, Satanism running through them like a politician, hedonism, plagiarism, stimulation, narcissism. Most recently, she came back with a stellar verse for Nas's King's Disease, and here's how he describes her writing. It's amazing. She said, I'm saving souls Y'all complaining about my lateness. Right. You know, when she says that line to me, you realize, whoa, it's not about how show business is set up and show up here and do this and do that. And she's saying, yo, listen, y'all, I, I hear what y'all saying, but yo, she, the first line is, in my life right now, I'm concerned with my freedom now. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm, but she's like, all my life is right now is concerned with my freedom. Mm -hmm. That's a different individual. Lauren Hill was never afraid of breaking molds and blending genres, but no matter what type of music she's making, Miss Hill leaves it all in the studio. You know, I mean, we're all flawed. You know, no one's perfect. But we're out here doing our best and trying hard. And for some reason, um, you know, when you put your, your soul and your music out there to the public, for some reason, your, your, your everything, you know what I'm saying, becomes like public public access, you know what I mean? And um, sometimes, you know, when the image is too clean, people always want to try and taint it. 
The miseducation of Lauryn Hill went on to sell over 20 million albums, which makes it two times diamond. It won five Grammys, including Album of the Year, and it went on to influence multiple generations of the biggest artists in the world, and that still continues to this day. No matter what else she does in her life, Miss Hill has contributed some of the most beautiful music in the history of creation. And if you couldn't tell, I'm a massive fan, and I was put on to her late, but once I found it, I continue to find inspiration in the art. So Lauren, if you happen to be scrolling through YouTube and you're watching this right now, thank you for sharing your soul with the world. But that's it for this video. This has been another episode of our Studio Deep Dive series. Let us know in the comments what is the one Lauren Hill studio session that you would have loved to be in the booth for, and let us know who we should cover next. As always, for Hip Hop DX, I'm Jeremy Hecht. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope you get one step closer towards your dreams. If nobody has told you yet today, I love you. Peace. I think so. That's a perfect song. Hey, where you been? Keep falling out of love. Hey, how come you haven't been with me again? I keep falling in and out of love. <laughs> Why haven't you called me? <laughs> in and out of love. <laughs> Use your phone? <laughs> no. <laughs>